Hey, I'm Gold, I'm a freelance colorist and TCTL developer, and in this video, I'm going to showcase my Color Crosstalk TCTL. This is a tool that takes multiple steps that all, can all be done in DaVinci Resolve and automates most of them so you can focus on the creative side of look creation. And this tool allows you to turn an image like this into this. Well, let's see how to use it. So, I have set up a node-based color managed project with this lovely image from Ari, going from Ari White Gamut Log C3 to DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate and to Rec 709 Gamma 2.4, that being my monitoring displays color space. And let's write two serial nodes so we can compare the built-in RGB mixer found here and my DC tail. Let's have this be the RGB mixer and this be the DC tail. To access the DC tail, go up to effects, search DC tail and drag it on. And here you have a list of all your DC tails, which can be put in your LUTs folder. And we can find the color crosstalk, in this case, version 1.2 DC tail. Out of the box, you can see that the DC tool does nothing to the image. We can confirm this by turning the node on and off and looking at the scopes. And to make the DC tool work as similar to the built-in RGB mixer as possible, only doing one automation, I will disable anchor skin tones and work in linear. Now let's do the first test. In the RGB mixer, let's add some blue to the green channel. And what we can see is that the whole image becomes a huge green mess. This is because we have shifted the overall balance of the image. And to restore this balance, we will have to take these values and divide them by a number so that the total becomes one once again. In this case, we have to divide both of these numbers by two and we can see we have achieved our result. And to make it as simple as possible, we'll also disable preserve luminance. Now, having done this, let's grab a still to compare later. And let's do the same thing with my DC tail. Let's take blue and green, slide it to one, and we're done. Now, if we compare, you can see a tiny bit of a difference on the scopes, but the color channels themselves aren't really moving. It just seems to be some kind of noise. Now the next thing you will probably like to do is to move the skin tones back to where they were. And the simplest and most non-destructive way to do this is to actually shift or rotate the hue of the whole image. And we can try to do this visually by using the hue rotation control on the primary color wheels panel. And let's just disable the node. Okay. We can try to do it visually, but well, we can never be completely sure that it's precisely what we started out with in terms of hue. So in my DC tool, you can check the anchor skin tones checkbox and it performs the hue rotation for you automatically, returning the skin tones hue to what they were at the beginning. If you have skin tones with a different base hue, then you can use the skin tone offset slider to target those. You don't have to know the precise value, you can just play around with the slider until the skin tones look correct once again. And finally, there's the work in linear option. To use this, you will also have to select the correct gamma you're working with in the gamma dropdown. In this case, we have DaVinci Intermediate, and when I check linear, you can see that the changes become more soft, which is something I personally like, and thus is the default setting for this DC tail. Well, there you go. If you like what you saw, you can find a link to the tool down in the doobly-doo. And till next time, bye.